Yo, what's good, y'all, man? We got full theory. Costco doesn't save you money. It's like shit, man. But um, get up, man. I know I hear those sounds. But yeah, like my button going crazy. I don't look on my mouse, man. But it's going crazy though. But we got a video out for y'all, man. So, hey, check it out. Like this, so hit the big snoop. And um, yeah, check it out. Costco. Let me know in comment below who's shopping Costco. Let me know. Let me know kind of low who shop at Costco. I shop at um Jules or um Marianas. You feel me, man? Let me know kind of low who shop at um Costco though. Let me know. But um yeah, like it up, sir. Hit the bell. Um, yeah, let's get it. I hey, everything straight in my hand. Let's say everything. Everything good in my hand. I bet, 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 bet. Okay, everything good. Okay. Only three ninety nine. Ugh, that's higher than it was last week. Excuse me, sir. Just gonna squeeze right by you. Oh come on! Ah damn, they made that bitch up. Shit, they ain't even go down. They made that bitch four nine nine. I haven't even had time to check out. What can I say? Inflation is crazy. Oh, would you look at that? Wait. Are you serious? Damn, sixty nine. How, how that shit went to four nine? I mean, inflation is going crazy, but how that shit went to four nine nine, six nine nine that quick, man? Three nine nine, four nine nine, and then six nine nine. God damn. Yes. God damn. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Food Theory, the only show that stretches your mind and your hard-earned dollar. Man, inflation has been brutal lately. Higher interest rates, egg shortages, even price hikes on Diet Coke. And you know what they say, things are likely going to get worse before they get better. So today, I'm going to inflate your brain with some money-saving tips and expose a couple of food myths along the way. If you're a fan of dough, and I know that you are considering this is a food channel after all, hit that subscribe button so you're always notified of when we post new videos. Video. For many of us, shopping at Costco is a rite of passage. From purchasing your first year's supply of toilet paper. I think Costco would be having no like big ass package. You know what I mean? They be having some like huge shit. Kinda like Santa Club type shit, I think. I never shop at Costco though. No, I never shop at Costco. Paper to unlocking the secret that is the $4.99 rotisserie chicken. Costco's become the place where you go for a jumbo pack of toilet paper. Yeah, I'm about to say, you get like jumbo pack of everything, like paper towels, toilet paper. You can get a jumbo pack of goddamn chips, water, like just everything, you know? It's, everything is big. And that motherfucker. And you walk out with a camping tent, a food processor, and 12 pounds of mozzarella. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you get everything. Everything's big over there. Like, you you could last for a good ass week or some shit. I ain't gonna lie. La cheese. Just for leave your month. manners at the door and hover over that sample table. Oh, yeah, they do got samples. Now, Santa Claus did have samples. Like the pizza vulture that you are. Bulk bulgogi and giant teddy bears aside, the point of Costco is that you get a lot in one stop, and you save a lot by buying in bulk. Yeah, that's why that's why they yeah, that, that, that's kind of like Santa Claus. If you're not familiar with it, everything's in bulk, so you could be in there. <laughs> you yeah, I'm just hey, you hey, you could you could get groceries. You gotta, you gotta buy groceries for another probably like I say every week, but shit, you get everything in bulk. Everything's big over there. Everything, you know, it could be two weeks. You're going to go shopping. You know what I mean? This I pinnacle of U.S. consumerism, let me explain. Costco's model is based on offering a limited stock of bulk. Yeah, see, look, you get limited. Yeah, you get big shit only products at lower rates than anywhere else. The premise is that for any item you know you'll use, whether it's paper towels, blueberry muffins, or TVs, I guess, Costco can sell you an enormous amount of that thing for what should be a lower price. That said, all of this so-called cost savings is gonna come with its own heaping helping of traps, pitfalls, and marketing ploys that'll stick it to you faster than a 50-ounce bottle of maple syrup. But what if I told you that I have the secret to beating every trick in the old Costco handbook? In fact, I know the single best technique for saving you the most money on meals and you can do it whether you're a family of one or eleven come on grab a flat Damn. bed cart that's big enough to carry a mattress and let's start talking about the costco pro strats to begin before we even enter costco we're gonna need to get past that bouncer waiting out front you see costco is a members only store ah uh, yeah damn so you can't so if you don't if you ain't a member you can't shop in that bitch Damn, that's, that's, that's crazy. Meaning that we can't get in without flashing this piece of plastic with our own little face staring back at us. As of today, Costco offers four types of memberships. A basic or gold star level starting at 60 bucks and a premium or executive member level that'll run you 120. And a lot of people got executive, well most people do. A lot of people got the other shit. Money. These memberships are designed to be an invest- 
investment in yourself, where you're basically betting that you can save $60, the cost of membership, over the course of the entire year, a few pennies at a time on each gallon tub of Grey Poupon that you're lugging home. But this isn't always a bet that you know you're going to be able to win unless you've done some serious math to calculate how many rolls of toilet paper, pounds of salmon, and bags of frozen broccoli you actually buy in a year. And Costco is well aware of this. They know that some <laughs> people with a membership are only going to enter the store a couple times a year, meaning that they just collect a membership fee and walk it straight to the bank. I hate because it's in bulk. In fact, memberships are where Costco's raking in the most cash to the tune of 72%. Yeah, because you good, yeah, because they force, I ain't gonna say force them, but you tell the people you gotta, you gotta sign up and shit of their entire operating budget. You heard that right. Nearly three quarters of their entire operation is covered by membership costs alone. In 2021, they collected $3.9 billion Damn. from 61 mil Damn. million members, which means that even when the costs of their products fluctuates or customers are shopping less for a few months because of things like massive inflation, Costco is going to be doing just fine. But memberships are doing a lot more than extracting just some upfront cash from you. It's also doing something much darker and more sinister. It's manipulating your mind. You see, one reason <laughs> you got that voice. <laughs> nah, and companies nah. require memberships is because they're powerful tools that get you to come back more often. Since our brains see those membership dues as sunk costs or money that can't be recovered. When you buy something, you always want it to be worth it, right? Whatever that means to you. If you buy a cool jacket, you want to Use it enough times to feel like you got your money's worth. If it's oh uh, yeah, no out, yeah. food, you want it to taste good and live up to the price that you paid. But how does this work with a Costco membership? Well, you paid all this money to get the membership up front on the promise that you'll save money later when you actually shop in the store. So what does this make your brain want to do? Buy a ton of stuff in the store so you can get back the price of that membership and savings. Seriously, spending money on a Costco membership makes your brain want to make up for it by spending even more money at Costco. It's actually brilliant. This is what's known as the sunk cost fallacy or the idea that we're more likely to invest in an action if we feel it'll make prior investments seem justified this is true even when the action no longer brings us joy despite being the opposite of what economic theory tells us is rational these sunk costs have been shown to have a massive impact on your behaviors so geez we're already dealing with an upfront investment followed by the psychology of sunk costs and crippling guilt that comes with it and we haven't even stepped foot in the store yet that said it's only after we're over the threshold pushing our shopping cart the size of a rowboat that the mind games get <laughs> even more intense. Damn. SeatGeek is the ticketing app for fans like the High Five Strangers Guy. If you're familiar with our video on how grocery stores trick your brain into spending more than you think, well, you probably know where this is going, but Costco actually takes things up to a whole nother level. You see, a major key to Costco's success is impulse purchases, items that you wouldn't normally buy, but you do it on a whim. And you can bet over the years that they've come up with some pretty sneaky tactics to get you to do just that. The first comes with the brand itself, making you think that you're in a quote unquote cheap store. That's right, they're not leaving all the floors Oh uh, yeah, wholesale. There's <laughs> concrete and all the heating pipes exposed just to pinch pennies. They're doing it to make you think they're pinching pennies. They're saving money. They're passing those savings on to you. We're all on the same team here, right? Wrong. If you feel <laughs> like you're in a thrift store, you won't be as careful about checking prices. You'll feel like those prices are better even when they're not. And leaving everything bare bones makes you feel like you're in a place that's attainable. A place that's not outside of anyone's league. On top of that, they start you right off at the front door with an interesting mix of stuff. Some things that you need and some things that you want. They want you seeing something that you use every day the second you walk in. That way, even if you're not running low, might as well pick it up to save time later or use eventually. Vitamins, big volume snacks, toothpaste, those are the things that are going to meet you right at the front door because who doesn't need to stock up on stuff like that? The other thing that's flashing in front of your face when you walk in are the TVs, the stereos, the expensive electronics, things that represent aspirational purchases that most people aren't buying every time they go in the store, but you could potentially buy them one day if you manage to save enough money by shopping at Costco. They give you a goal to shoot for. And hey, if you said no to that 70-inch OLED for a couple thousand dollars at the door, look how much you just saved. Might as well reward yourself with an extra tray of 24 fresh cinnamon buns from the bakery, only $11.99. Beating you with expensive items that you want makes it a lot more likely that you'll impulse buy something much smaller later to feel like you weren't completely depriving yourself. When in reality, you wouldn't have wanted anything extra in the first place if you didn't see beautiful displays of MacBooks. All you came in for was just several cows worth of milk. Next, have you noticed how things kind of seem randomly sprinkled throughout Costco, like some cheese over there, some blenders over here, some random barrels of pretzels somewhere in the middle. It's no accident. In fact, Costco's distribution of the staples you actually need, produce, milk, condiments, and snacks, they're all designed to be a treasure hunt through the store that forces you to stumble across a huge array of products that you didn't actually need, or didn't realize that you needed, but, well, 
while you're here, you might as well pick them up, right? And all, <laughs> nah. all of that wandering and hunting around helps you to feel just a little bit more peckish. Right in time to pass by their most devious tactic of all, the free... Ah, uh, yeah, the free sample. Free samples. Yep, all those tiny little crackers with goat cheese that money bloggers want to convince you constitute as a free meal. All of those nice little freebies are actually just putting their hands down in your wallet. A study from the University of New York showed that when a grocery store offers free samples, impulse purchases in that category go up over 50%. But just think about what that Damn. means for Costco. If you like a free sample, you're not just buying one small wedge of cheese or one little packet of cocktail weenies, you're buying the farm. Free samples are especially valuable at Costco because every time they convert a single sale, what they're really doing is converting two to four sales worth of a regular store. Congratulations, you are now the proud owner of 20 pepperoni pizzas because you like that one little two by two inch square. That is some serious marketing psychology no matter how you slice it. But okay, let's say that you've come in incredibly prepared. You have your budget, you have a list, you've arrived on a full stomach, ready to resist even the most inviting little old lady proffering you a free Tuscan meatball. What if I genuinely only buy the staples? Will I save a lot of money? Well, I did an analysis of what it would cost to buy common groceries at Costco compared to Walmart. I looked at common food items like eggs and milk, produce like potatoes and broccoli, even meats like chicken and beef. I even threw in a pair of AirPods just to see if tech was where I'd save. It was not. What I found was, drum roll please, on average, you're saving $1.14 per product shopping at Costco. Yay? Is that, is that a win? Fun fact, the biggest savings mm. actually came from coffee at only 42 cents per serving. So hey, you can rest easy knowing that you do in fact save by shopping at Costco, provided you buy at least 53 items there in any given calendar year, instead of buying those items at another retailer. And that you use everything that you buy. That right there is the biggest sticking point, isn't it? You only save money if you use the stuff that you bought. You see, the average price of an item at Costco Costco is a lot more than a smaller item at another store. 35. Oh, okay, I see. And then 899 for that little ass shit. Meaning okay, that you're gonna I have see. to be ready to make an investment in that food, and you're gonna be eating it like every day until it runs out. In my analysis of staples that I would need to now you get both, so. buy at Costco instead of buying at a regular grocery store or Walmart, I would need to spend over $400 to buy the bulk versions of all of those things. And in the end, on an average basis, when you normalize for the amount of products you bought, you only save yourself $20. And what happens if I don't use everything I just bought? Well, then it goes to waste of course, meaning that I just have to go back and buy more. And chances are, unless my meal planning is prodigious and I know exactly how much my family has eaten each day, I'm not gonna get it right. What the heck am I gonna do with five pounds of lemons, four dozen eggs? <laughs> nah, no care. That shit is a lot. I mean, hey, some people don't... You know what I mean? But you gotta go back to the grocery store, though. But that is a lot, though. No care. I better be a baker or Gaston, or my entire family better be eating omelets every day, which will also help me use up the pounds and pounds of cheddar cheese that are now weighing down my refrigerator shelves. And you see, this is where most people fall into the Costco trap. Food goes to waste, and you just end up buying it all again. Oh, yeah. Or you end up eating the same thing every day out of obligation, not because it was the best choice for you based on your nutrition, but because you felt guilty because wasted food equals wasted money. So sure, in some scenarios, shopping at Costco makes sense. Say you're an affluent college educator, educated homeowner with both a family and enough disposable income to make buying in bulk a good option to stock your enormous refrigerator and freezer. Because theorists, that right there, that is Costco's target customer. You might be led to believe that the average Costco shopper is lower income or a blue collar worker on a shoestring, but you couldn't be more wrong. Uh, you gotta have money. <laughs> you gotta money on that Costco. No cat. According to their own accounts, who they're actually targeting. Yeah, money is no cat are professional women between the ages of 35 and 45 who make on average over $125,000 per year and are spending well over $100 per shop and trip. When I found this out, I was seriously shocked. Like, this is Costco's biggest secret. A store that markets itself as discount is actually a store for rich people. Just, you know, rich people who want to feel... Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> you gotta have, yeah, you know what I mean? Gotta have that money. Cat like they're saving money. It's also why you see Costco stores focused around suburban areas. It's just not that practical. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Practical for an 18-year-old living in a cramped college dorm to buy in bulk. You're gonna need a home with a garage and a freezer and another freezer and probably a shed. Oh, and when it comes to non-food items like their electronics, these are just price matched with other stores or Best Buy. But Costco doesn't have any kind of student discount options because students, again, are not on the budget or the demographic that they're looking for. Does that mean that all is lost for your Costco membership? Not exactly. You see, with today's unbridled inflation, I do actually believe that there's a place for that Costco membership, and it's not where you think. What if I told you that a Costco 
Costco membership could save you money even without you stepping foot into the store. Enter the Buck 50 hot dog deal. Introduced back in 1985, the legendary hot dog deal is one of the main attractions at Costco's food court, which is what they call the snack stand that sits immediately inside or outside the door at most stores, and this thing completely slays everything. The average yearly sales for Costco hot dogs outperform all the Major League Baseball stadiums combined by a factor of four. Stand aside. Damn. Inside their Dodger dog, the true king has arrived. What's even more impressive, though, is that this hot dog deal should be running you about $4.16 in today's money. But against all odds, the price has stayed the same at a buck. 50 for over 35 years. It's actually pretty fair to call this one inflation proof. This legendary meal consists of a quarter pound all beef frank, a bun, and a 20 ounce soda with free refills. I ran the numbers to see how much it would really cost someone to make this meal at home, and what I found was actually shocking. A quarter pound all beef frank will cost you a buck 18. The bun, another 35 cents. A 20 ounce soda plus refill, buck 27. Coming to a grand total of $2.80. I don't know if you realize just how big of a deal that is. You're saving a buck 30 per meal by eating at Costco and not cooking your meal at home. The old saying of save money by bringing your lunch from home? Yeah, it might be true in every other case, but the next mm -hmm. time you hear this from a friend or a co-worker, you just send them straight over to Costco. And you know what? You can even sometimes send them there without a membership. Many online forums, including Reddit, have documented users visiting their local Costco's where the food court is right outside the store, and they just pay for the combo in cash. So you can walk up anytime and buy an inflation-proof meal at a members-only club price, and you don't have to have a membership. And you can get away with it every time. It feels like you just hacked the matrix. And if you are a member, well, in just 47 meals, less than one Costco hot dog meal per week for any member of your family, you've just made back your entire membership and you didn't even have to wash a single dish. A family of three could start saving in as little as 16 weeks. And because hot dogs are one of like three foods that my preschooler currently eats, you'll probably find me at the Costco tomorrow. In a time where all the good stuff seems like it's getting more expensive or going away, it's good to know that you can still have dinner and a drink at your friendly neighborhood Costco. Just don't listen to that little old lady trying to lure you inside with her cheese cubes. No! Ha <laughs> ha, a little meatball. <laughs> no! You stay back, Edna! And as all- Damn. <laughs> Always remember, my friends, it's just a theory. Oh! A food theory. A food theory! Bon appetit. But, um, yeah, though, man. Like it up, still hit the bell, man. Bang a video. You know, so let me know in the comments below y'all shop at Costco. Let me know in the comments below. Or no, let me know what grocery store you shop at. And let me know. But, um, yeah, like it up, sir. Hit the bell. And, um, yeah. Alright. Peace.